question uh, on the T2 T2 conciliation project. So we have uh, a lot of people registered today again. Um, over a thousand people and a thousand people is the max for the live streaming or for the WebEx, sorry. So we are asking some of you to move over to um, to the to the live stream if possible. You can find the link to the live stream in the chat. Uh, and there you will go straight to the website and view it from here. Um, we will allow you to um, ask questions also if you're in the live stream. Um, so it, it's possible to join both. And in order to have the best quality of the event, it would be best that some people would be viewing by a live stream. Uh, just a few practical information before we get going with the actual program of today, which is uh, big, as you can see here on the screen. Um, so all of you will be muted. Uh, we do this uh, in order to have the best sound on the, on the event today. Um, you will be able to ask questions throughout the day, uh, either in the chat if you're uh, connected uh, to the WebEx, or you can send emails to our email account, which is mip.events at ecb.europa.eu. We can also post this one in the, in the chat. Um, so both, of, uh, both options are available to you. So we hope you will enjoy the event and uh, you know engage as much as possible. We will try to pick up as many questions as possible, but bear with us if we will miss some. <laughs> so um, without any uh, further delay, so here again, quick on the live stream. So we really try to push this because it will improve the, the event for everyone if we have some people viewing uh, the, the streaming. So without any more delay and introduction from my side, I will move straight over to uh, Dimitri. Deputy Director General um, at the ECB, who will do the, the, the update and the introduction and who is the host today. So all yes. from you, over to you, Dimitri. Yes, good. Uh, thank you, Eileen, and I hope you hear me well. We do. Yes, okay, good. And, uh, and good morning to everyone and, and welcome to this uh, focus session on the T2, T2S consolidation. Well, as you mentioned, Eileen, today we have more than 1,000 participants who registered for the event. Of course, we are, we are delighted uh, with this continued high interest in those sessions, and we hope to make this one, uh, I would say, as insightful as the previous ones. We, as you said, you, you have, we have uh, established a, a live streaming, uh, and uh, I believe it was mentioned, uh, shown on the, on, the, on the slides, and, uh, and it's also on the chat. Um, there is also uh, an email address, uh, mip.events at ecbeuropa.eu. I believe it was also shown uh, or prompted where you could ask, uh, or where you could send your questions. And of course, we'll try to answer them um, as much as we can. Um, so our last focus session was uh, before summer. So if I recall well, it was on the 15th of June. And I know that in between, uh, a lot of work was done uh, over the summer uh, on all sides. Uh, and this is probably necessary uh, if we keep in mind that um, we are actually now 14 months away from the goal I've date. And, and in this respect, your continued efforts and, and commitments uh, to the project are uh, obviously essential. On, on the side of the Euro system, I, I said a lot of work was done over the summer. On the on the side of the Euro system, we have entered into a, a testing stage, which we call central bank testing. It's also the last uh, testing stage before we enter into the user testing, actually early December. Uh, within the central bank testing, the, the connectivity test was completed, what was done. The, the first step of setting up reference data in the CRDM, so the, the central uh, reference data management uh, was, was conducted. I must say that here uh, we, we progressed a bit slower than, than expected, uh, mainly I would say due to some issues we had uh, with the tooling available, but, but this is now behind us. Uh, and actually, at the, at, uh, as we speak, the, the central banks are fully engaged now into the function testing of the core modules, so the central liquidity, liquidity management and the FTGS. Uh, of course, 
uh, in this testing stage, incidents are raised uh, every day. Sometimes we find defects, that's the name of the game, and uh, the four CB are doing their best to fix them as quickly as possible. And this is the, the hard work that we do on our side, basically to secure the best possible entry conditions for user testing uh, in December. If we move to the, the next slide, uh, on, the, on the participant side, I will cover a bit the milestones now, uh, starting with 2021. Uh, tomorrow we enter in Q4, so no surprise that uh, main, the, the main milestones, or many milestones, I would say, are behind us already. Um, so the, the teams, what, what we know is that the teams on your side have been working quite hard uh, mainly on adapting your legacy systems and also testing them. And this actually corresponds to the earlier milestones we had this year. Um, an obvious area of focus now is the user testing starting on the 1st of December and also the, the, the uh, related preparatory activities. Here we talk mainly about the connectivity test, so the, the milestone NCO1, uh, which started early September. I hear from the team that um, many of you have decided to enter as early as possible into uh, such connectivity tests, which obviously we welcome because that shows uh, a, a high degree of readiness. Um, and Maite will cover that later today, uh, uh, later this morning. Uh, and last but not least, uh, from the perspective of you uh, preparing for the, the, the testing, uh, we have the, the milestone IST1 corresponding to the, the training uh, uh, that the central banks uh, are providing to you. And I'm sure you must be in touch with them to book uh, your session. Um, moving on to the, the to next year, so, so 2022, I can be quick, I believe, uh, here. Uh, obviously, we have our launch date, our go-live date, on the 21st of November 2022. Uh, before that, we have the connectivity to production, which is uh, uh, supposed to take place between May and July. Uh, we obviously have the end of user testing, end of September. It's the uh, milestone U UTA2, end of September. We also have another a set of uh, milestones related to the migration activities and also the operation readiness. But I believe we will have other occasions and other focus sessions to cover those milestones in, in greater detail. So for today, moving on to the next slide, for today on the agenda, what do we have? Uh, I, I gave you a quick update on the project. Uh, uh, after me, Jean uh, will provide us with some insights on the activities that you need to complete or to conduct uh, to connect to the platform, it will walk us through the connectivity guide, which was published uh, a few months ago now. Um, there, there, thereafter, we will have Maite uh, telling us more about the market readiness or your readiness, and she will provide us with an overview of the last report that was delivered to the Market Infrastructure Board a few weeks ago, uh, and she will also give us kind of a prospective view on the future milestones. Um, and I believe finally, she also, have, uh, she also has a few figures on the connectivity tests that are taking place uh, uh, on your side. Um, thereafter, Marek uh, will cover uh, the, the, the ISO 22 migration. So we will be focusing on uh, the, the ISO 22 of course, it will cover the migration from the perspective of the migration of the T2, T2S conciliation to, so your migration to, uh, to uh, um, ISO 22 in the context of the conciliation, but not only. It will also uh, provide us with, I believe, very insightful information on what happens beyond the conciliation. So what other uh, market infrastructures have planned to do, and I believe that will be quite, quite uh, uh, insightful. Uh, in this respect, maybe one uh, other comment. You, you may remember that at some point in time, we, we had in mind uh, keeping uh, uh, as a contingency measure the possibility to migrate in like for like mode, as opposed to the fully fledged, which is, which is the base plan. 
Uh, in the last session, the last uh, info session, focus session, sorry, I uh, told you that the MIB was going to discuss the topic towards the end of June. And what I can share with you today, although I believe there was sufficient communication at all already, uh, is that this option to migrate in like for like is now off the table. And Marek will cover that uh, when, uh, when he, he, he uh, steps in for the update on the ISO 2022. And last but not least, we will have Bobby uh, covering the uh, your preparation for user testing, I would say, beyond uh, connectivity. Uh, with this, I would I, I wish you a, a, fruitful, a fruitful event. Again, do not hesitate to, to raise any questions you may have either via the chat or via email. And uh, I believe it's now time that I give you back the floor, Elin, or I don't know, directly maybe to Jean for the first content topic, I would say. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. So we can hand straight over to you, Sean. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, Dimitri, for the, the introduction. So indeed, the main question uh, for now is, are you ready to connect? As we highlighted in the milestones, I'm covering the, the, the tasks that have to be performed between the start of the user testing connectivity testing. It started a few weeks ago and until November. So please keep in mind all those steps have to be completed before end of November, before you can start the user testing. So besides a few reminders in the introduction, I will go through some steps. There is uh, nothing new there. So the documents are available, published. I will remind at the end where you can find this information. But I have extracted for you some important steps and guides which may trigger some additional questions and I'll be happy uh, to go through those questions. I will explain in the, in the third part how you can effectively test that you are connected to the target services platform and remind as well in case you would have some issues how to uh, troubleshoot and uh, uh, how we can provide support to those uh, issues. So as an introduction in the next slide, uh, just a quick reminder, uh, we are talking about the user testing, connectivity testing. So you will hear us sometimes use the UT, UT, UT means user testing. And this presentation aims at providing so market participants the information to connect to the target services platform via this new tool that we call the Eurosystem Single Market Infrastructure Gateway, otherwise called SMIG. So we, I know we have a lot of acronyms. I'll try to remind them from time to time, but you will hear about SMIG in that case. So the SMIG platform is the single access point to all target services. We're talking here about the future T2, T2S, TIPS and ECMS specifically for those who are directly connected to the platform, meaning the directly connected actors. You will see in our documentation, indeed, the term DECOA, directly connected actors, also sometimes named or labeled target services actors. So I will use indifferently either DECOA or target services actors when referring to those participants who, are, who have to connect to the platform. I will also refer to the network services providers, our partners Siacolt and Swift, as NSPs. Just a quick reminder that the SMIC platform provides the access to both the user to application, so where you connect directly to the application for, let's say, a GUI uh, uh, transaction, otherwise called U2A, user to application, but also the connectivity for the application, otherwise called A2A, so application to application communication. So that's it. So I'll try not to use too many acronyms there and to refer to their names, but here you have the, the, the landscape. And uh, on the next slide, I can start guiding through those steps, which again, you can find at the end, you will see an annex, the link, when we will publish that presentation, you will have directly access to the link of those documentation. Here, I'm mostly referring to the Target Services Connectivity Guide, which is already available on our website. So here we are talking about the steps required to connect to the Target Services platform. So remember, we are not yet using the software. First, you need to connect to the platform. 
Some of you might be already connected from historical or legacy system via a contract called the uh, license agreement, if I'm not mistaken. But now we are using the ESMIC platform, meaning that you need to conduct those steps via the concession contract in order to get access to the target services platform via the ESMIC. So the first step that you need to perform is to contact the network service providers. You, if, if you haven't done that yet, you need to select and sign a contract with NSP or NSPs in order for uh, you to nominate basically the technical contacts as system administrators, register them, and this is going through the respective NSPs procedure. So first thing, contract with an NSP, nothing can happen without that. The next step actually will have to happen between you and your respective central banks because once you have uh, registered with the network service provider, we need to identify your party in the system. So first step with the net network service provider, second step with the national central banks. Here I take the example of T2 because we are talking about the consolidation start of user testing. You would be identified either as a payment bank or an ancillary system. And again, all this configuration happens in the target services software, creation of user, assignment of privileges, linking your certificate and your distinguished names. This happens between you and the central banks. Once this is done, so contract with the NSP, party setup in CRDM, you still need to, to request what is named here those closed group of users, CGU subscription. Uh, this is maintained by the NSP through an electronic form which has to be authorized by the central banks and also the target services operator. So contract with the NSP, party setup in CRDM and then subscription to the closed group of users. Without that, no access to the platform. So thank you very much, Eileen, on the, on the next step. Uh, and this is another section of the SEM documents, the Target Services Connectivity Guide. What happens next? So you have a contract, you need now to install and perform some technical tasks. So this requires most likely the involvement of your IT department because the target services actor needs to request and install the dig digital certificates from the NSPs. The NSPs uh, from their PKI, public key infrastructure, will provide you two types of certificates. A type for U2A channel, you remember the GUI access user to application, and those certificates can be installed on smart devices, smart card or USB tokens, or within your infrastructure on those uh, box, uh, black box called hardware security module HSM. For the A2A channels, it has to go through an HSM. So you have no choice for the A2A channels, whereas for the U2A channels, you have a bit more flexibility. Here, this procedure has to happen between you and the NSP. So the procedure will be provided by, and the support will be provided by the NSP in order to download, install and check the digital certificate. Uh, just a quick note, maybe it sounds obvious, but we are talking about SMIC as the single access point, technical infrastructure to access all target services. Therefore, the SEM certificate can be used for all target services via the SMIC platform. Of course, the access rights for the different services may be different, but for the first step, which is connecting you to the target services platform via SMIC, requires the SEM certificate. Again, you might be already connected via the legacy uh, license agreement. You have still to contract via the new SMIC concession contract, but once you have installed the certificate, you would be good to go to test that you are fully connected. So what happens after that? So on the next slide, uh, I mentioned, so first step is done. You have contracted with the NSP, you have installed the digital certificate. 
The next step will happen in the background and will be covered as part of the uh, also the, the user testing. You will have requested your user. Uh, the central banks will have uh, parameter the user in CRDM. And now you would like to do some tests. I have also extracted here from the, uh, the connectivity guides few examples of what will happen and for you to demonstrate that you are successfully connected to the target services. Again, I make this distinction. This is a proof of connectivity. It's not yet a proof that you are uh, performing some transaction within the software. It's just a proof that you would be connected. U2A. So U2A, remember, user to application, you have to enter agree, and then you will be able to do that by doing the following. Two cases, uh, you would be connected to a platform called UTest, user testing platform. So I will refer as UTest. And there, two things can happen. Either you are not yet configured into the UTest platform and you will end up into this landing page for which I have done a screenshot on the right hand side, which beautifully says Auth authentication check failed. But it's still fine because you are not yet configured in the UTest. But this also means that you have reached the landing page, which tells you that, which is already a proof that you are connected to the target services platform. So it's not good because you cannot start the testing, but it's good because it proves that you are connected via SMIC to the target services platform. If you are already connected and configured into UTest, then you will see the landing page with the services. So depending on the privilege that are already assigned to you or to the user who is connecting, for example, it can be a tips access already configured, you would have a different landing page displaying the different services. But already remember, if you reach that screen, which says authentication check failed, it means that you are connected. So this is a good sign. On the next slide, I take an example for the A to A connectivity. So we are not talking about the GUI, we are talking about the application connecting to another application via the SMIC platform. Here we have to be cautious because uh, the, uh, all the backend modules will be fully deployed before the start of U tests, meaning the 26th of November for us. 1st of December for the start of your test. Nevertheless, you can already start testing a subset of messages that can be exchanged with T2 over SMIC. And there, uh, these are the two examples that we give as well in the connectivity guides. And this is mostly related to the nature of the messages that you will be sending. Uh, you may remember you have two types of messages that can be exchanged, what we call the real-time messages. So basically they have to be processed with priority or the so-called store and forward messages that will be placed in a queue and then prioritized by the system. Uh, what happens if you send so those kind of messages? You may receive an admi 7 messages in case of an issue, but also uh, you may receive nothing. This can happen depending on different factors, on the traffic mode, on the prioritization. It doesn't mean that it is not working, but in some cases you won't receive immediately an answer. So therefore, keep in mind, you could receive both the ADMI 007, but in some cases, in case your message is not processed yet, you won't have a direct answer. Therefore, on the next slide, I remind uh, those, those use cases. Huh? So when will you receive an ADMI 007? In case you have sent a real-time messages to be processed immediately, but for whatever reason, it is not processed after the parameter timeout, which is 40 seconds, then it triggers this message and you will say, oh, I have a timeout. Nevertheless, this is a proof that you are connected because you received the timeout message. So it went through. In case the store and forward message, so to be later prioritized, has been successfully received, 
you will not receive a message from the system. But this is where the second part of the slides comes at hand very handy. You have a possibility, you have an option, which is an option that you have to opt in with the NSP to subscribe to a delivery notification. This will inform the target services actors that the message or the file has been received by the platform. So this is also a proof that you are connected. If you have subscribed to the delivery notification, you will receive from the NSP a message with the uh, digital signature inside with some other fields which are also reminded in the target services connectivity guide saying, guys, we have taken your message, we have forwarded your message to the target services software, and you receive these delivery notifications. So this is another proof that you would be fully connected. Nevertheless, you could still reach out to the target services, uh, target service desk in order to get evidence that your message or file has been received by the target services platform. In the next slide, I am also reminded how to troubleshoot and support. There are various actors and they have to be reached in different cases. Not news here, this is also part of the Target Services Connectivity Guide, where you will find the contact. The first level of support, uh, I would say reach out to the NSP first, if you want to troubleshoot that you are properly connected, this should be the first thing to do. Check with the NSP that you are properly registered, that you have installed properly the certificate, that you go through all the network, technical services layers, security layers before going to the next step. Uh, in case this is not sufficient, you would go via the national service desk of your corresponding or respective central banks in order to continue the troubleshooting. This is the first part. On the other hand, uh, if you want to go a bit further in case of doubts, a uh, participant should also contact the T2 operator. If this is still not sufficient, both the NSP and the T2 operator may decide to cooperate and organize a joint teleconference with the central bank of the participant to go one step further. In any case, let's say the service level agreements of those respective uh, troubleshooting parties, so NSP, National Service Desk, T2 Operator, you will find in the user testing terms of reference, which is another document which is already available on our website. So you will hear maybe later of the UT Tor, user testing terms of reference, and you will find the opening hours, basically the NSP would answer 24 seven, whereas the National Service Desk has an extended working hours from seven to 1900. But you will find the detailed information on that other document called the user testing terms of reference. So on the uh, next slide, we remind all those documents. Uh, so the target services connectivity guide from which I extracted most of the content from this morning. You will have also the qualified configuration documents, which is the mandatory configuration on the endpoint that you have to comply with in order to uh, perform the testing. Another very important document I mentioned right uh, before, which is the user testing terms of reference, where you will find the rules of engagement, if I may, and uh, as well a reminder of the detailed specification of the SMIC platform, which will remind you what this platform may provide. So as a wrap up, uh, if you remember the different steps I was just uh, describing before, first, the connectivity goes via the NSP, a contract needs to be established, and then the technical steps needs to be performed with the certificates and the technical connectivity, so connecting the pipes. Then you would go to the central banks to parameter the user and the access, and then
And after you could have your proof of connectivity by performing some few test messages. On the next slide, and I think I am done indeed. I thank you for the attention. I will uh, quickly scroll through the questions. I think there were some questions in the chat, yeah. but please feel free to, to raise them. Yeah, thank you, Sean. There were indeed some questions in the chat. Uh, you can probably also view them, but I could maybe read out here one for you. So there is um, there is different people here. There's one asking about uh, your U tests. Um, so the question is if um, users configure themselves in the U test, or this is set up by someone else, like an IT provider or the National Central Bank, or who yeah. basically set, does this? So we, we have to distinguish there, and, and uh, uh, thankfully uh, Bobby will correct me. So you have to distinguish. You have to access first to the U-Test platform, and this is the first step I was describing that has to be performed with the NSP. So there you will access the U-Test platform, but still you have no access rights to perform no actions in the U-Test software. So you would have to go through this first step, and then contact national central banks in order to set up the users in the U-Test platform in order to start using the software. So you have to do both. First, you have to contract with the NSP to get access to the U-Test platform, and then with the national central banks to have users allowed in the U-Test software. Super, we have more questions ticking in here. Now people are waking up, Sean, so you're not off the hook yet. Um, so there's somebody asking about, um, about, hold on, let me go through them here. So we have one, uh, the two NSPs can exchange information regarding the configuration, or is it um, a disclosure? Can you talk about that? Um, let me let me look at the question. Uh, uh, exchange of information is there. I have to be cautious. So uh, uh, we are not exchanging, of course, confidential information. In case the participants would decide to go with the two NSPs, if I remember correctly, they will have to contract with the two NSPs separately because these are different NSP, different communication channels. And the uh, respective CGU, the closed groups or users, are maintained, and if I'm not mistaken, by each NSP. So I believe this, uh, this uh, uh, I'm not sure that there are, uh, uh, or the kind of information that he somehow disclosed, but in, in any case, the contractual relationship will be with each NSP. And I jump in into the next question as well, because this is somehow related. In case you would have already a certificate from one of the existing NSP, here we have to make the distinction and you have to ask yourself, did you get your certificate via the old legacy connectivity, which was called this license agreement, or did you get it already from a new contract, which we call the concession contract for SMIC? Uh, you have to have a certificate via the concession contracts. Super. Uh, so we're getting a lot of questions here. Um, there's somebody um, that would like you to elaborate um, a bit on what it means that the users have subscribed to a notification sure. service. So the, the delivery notification uh, is not something that is coming from the software. It's coming really from the network service provider. So if you want, it's a proof of delivery. If you look at, uh, um, if I do a correlation with the post services and you have this uh, proof of delivery, this is exactly that. So you send a message. Imagine you are in an A to A situation. So you have a system in your platform and you want to send a message in the target services platform. It's a fire. It's not entirely true, but imagine a fire and forget. So you send the message and then depending on the traffic prioritization, you may not get the answer directly from the system. Let's take, imagine uh, a PAX 8 message for a payment. Before the, you, you receive the PAX 002, 
message can happen a few seconds, a few minutes. But if you have subscribed to the network service provider delivery notification, you send your PAX 8 message and the network service provider will send you this delivery notification and say, we have received your PAX, 8, uh, PAX 008 message and we have transferred it successfully to the target services platform. So it is exactly what it, what it says. It's a delivery notification. It's not a proof that the transaction has been performed successfully. It's just an indication that the message has been successfully relayed to the target services. Super. Then um, my questions are flying around here on my screen. But there is somebody asking a question about reference data, so payment banks and reference data, um, for the user testing to begin. And I think the question is referring to um, basically who 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 sets what up. And that's, I don't want to spoil a later presentation. <laughs> this is, this will be covered by Bobby's presentation. So please be patient a little bit more. Here, I'm just covering the first step to connect to the platform and later on, on how to have the first proof of connectivity. But please be a little bit patient. Bobby will explain exactly what has to be performed in order to start the user testing. Excellent. Exactly. I think a lot of the questions will be covered in the day, so you're all very eager to get all the questions here, but we will cover most of it. So bear with us for the day. Um, uh, let's just Elin, a quick, Elin, yeah. Elin, maybe Dimitri speaking. Yeah. Uh, there is also a question on the questions, uh, and uh, one of the questions is, how do we deal with those questions that we would not have covered uh, during the session? Yeah. Uh, and I believe that should be also explained indeed. Yeah. So first of all, thank you, Dimitri, for this. So first of all, all the presentations will be published after the event, what Sean also mentioned before. So you will have all the material. What we can do is we can go through all the questions that we are receiving and maybe potentially will not be able to cover and that were not covered in later presentations. And then we can see how to deal with these and potentially publish them under professional use afterwards so that you would have more information after the session as well um, so i hope that uh, that clarifies um, so i'm wondering if we should maybe move on and then uh, we can keep having a look at the chat and then if there's questions that we feel that we will not cover in later presentations we can pick them up because i believe sean is with us a little bit longer are you nodding or yes you're nodding very good so we will have a look at the chat but then maybe now we will thank Sean for his presentation and then slowly move on to the next one and see how much we get covered here. So thank you, Sean, very much. The next presenter we have with us is Maita. So Maita, I will hand over to you and start sharing the slides again. We do not hear you, Maita. Have you lost us? We might have lost Maita. But that's okay. We have a lot of other people ready. So worst case scenario, we would just skip Maita and come back to Maita. Yeah, Marek, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You are here. Hi, Dean. So, hi there. So maybe we skip Maita and we move on with you, and then we come back to Maita in a in a minute. So let me just move forward here to the correct slides. So here we are. Marek, over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Aline. Um, so why am I holding an ISO 20022 presentation today? Um, I think Dimitri mentioned uh, that the Eurosystem central banks um, are testing already. And some of you have connected uh, successfully to ESMIC uh, in the meantime. And uh, ISO 20022 is a reality, isn't it? 
Um, I want to stress two points today. And uh, the first one, I think Dimitri already mentioned. So I want to emphasize uh, the MIB announcement from July. Uh, we as community, as target uh, community, we will migrate fully fledged uh, to ISO 28. Uh, my second key, key message for today is um, in this endeavor to migrate to ISO 2022, um, we are not alone. Right, so we are in very good company, and that that is the part of my presentation that will show us a little bit more um, around uh, our table. Um, my name is Marek Kozak. I'm part of the T2 T2S consolidation project, and uh, uh, within there, I'm responsible for the ISO 2020 part. So um, on the next slide, um, I will provide a brief overview of uh, today's session. Um, so before uh, entering into the ISO implementation update and how everyone is progressing, um, I will start with explaining our bureau system rationale and motivation uh, to migrate to ISO 2022 and uh, refresh uh, our minds on that. Um, next, I will briefly introduce uh, my definition of the payments industry and uh, then provide an update where we stand uh, within this industry on the um, ISO 2022 migration. Um, I will then make a short deep dive into the SWIFT's cross-border payment uh, migration and introduce the terms inflow translation and transaction manager, which are quite of relevance for us. And uh, finally, I will also explain uh, what is this relevance and what is the impact um, of those two terms on our project. Um, so let's start with the why are we migrating to ISO 2022. Um, so, there are multiple reasons. Uh, the most important for us, um, as you will know, uh, we run multiple uh, services in production today, uh, and we plan to, to deploy more of those services in the future. So, we have Target 2 as an RTGS, uh, we have T2S as a security settlement platform, as well as TIPS as an instant payment platform. And um, with ECMS, we are entering into the collateral management domain. And all those services uh, basically need a common um, uh, means uh, of communication, common language. And the ISO 2002 is offering this uh, with a common data dictionary across all the uh, business domains. So be it securities, be it collateral, be it payments. The second point, um, why we are interested in ISO 2002, in particular for payments, is that with ISO 2002, we get rid of uh, old restrictions um, in terms of network choice, as well as in terms of the message richness. So I won't go into the, the, the detail of this, um, but in a nutshell, uh, the core um, MT payment messages that are used uh, today, still today, have been specified before my birth, right? So they are uh, quite limited uh, still. Uh, for example, the remittance information uh, field in the MT messages is shorter than a regular uh, text message. And um, yeah, last uh, point and one last motivation uh, not to be forgotten. Um, with ISO 20022, uh, we implement uh, payment messages in a very harmonized way across the globe. So this is one piece of the puzzle in order to uh, ease cross-border payments uh, globally uh, significantly. So I will also speak about that uh, a little bit later in, in the presentation. So the next slide uh, will now introduce how the industry is migrating to ISO 2022 and how it is uh, progressing. Um, but before answering the progress question, um, I have broken down uh, the industry into several segments, um, just to, to make it easier to understand what I'm talking about and where are we in the, in the overall picture. So if we look at the payment chain uh, at the top of the slide, um, when a bank A sends a payment uh, via uh, a market infrastructure to bank B, then this um, I call bank 2MI space. Uh, it's also known many to one space and Basically, it's what, what our project is about, right? So uh, the MI, this market infrastructure, could be T2, and Bank A and Bank B could be European market 
participants. However, you could also replace the MI with, with CHEPS in, in, the, in the UK or with FedWire in the US and with the related uh, communities. You know? So this um, segment um, of the industry actually forms uh, the tip of uh, three layers that I will go through one by one. Um, focusing on, on the bank to mi segment, um, here the discussion around how messages are to be used, so on how uh, those messages will flow and uh, which content they, they should contain. Um, this discussion is taking place in the High Value Payments System Plus market practice group uh, usually, and that's also the group uh, on which basis our T2 messages are uh, defined. Um, so, um, in, in this uh, industry segment, also the individual market infrastructure operation plans are of relevance. Again, that uh, we'll have a slide on that. Um, so, the next slide introduced now the second uh, layer of, um, of the industry. Um, here, again, we, we start from the payment chain. If Bank C um, is actually sending a payment to Bank A, that is then forwarded via the market infrastructure to bank B, and that is again forwarded to bank D at the end of the chain. That falls for me into the bank-to-bank -bank, uh, domain. Um, it's also known as the as the many-to-many uh, -many space or correspondent banking space. And uh, yeah, this is the second layer of that of that pyramid. And um, uh, to to uh, draw an analogy to the previous slide here. The discussions are taking place in the so-called CBPR Plus, the Cross-Border Payments and Reporting Plus group, and here the, the messages that are being exchanged between Bank C and, uh, for example, Bank A um, are being discussed. Um, most uh, dominant here is SWIFT, um, as they are actually offering the network uh, on which the cross-border payments or the, the payments are being ex exchanged between corresponding banks. So here, the migration plan of SWIFT and the coexistence phase uh, that will commence in November 2022 fall uh, under this. Um, then with the next slide, I'm introducing the, the, the final piece of the industry um, that uh, from my perspective is not to be forgotten, right? because this forms actually the biggest user group um, of uh, payment messages. And um, uh, starting again from the payment chain, you see that, that we have on the left-hand side a corporate A that is actually initiating a payment with Bank C. And on the other side, there is the Bank D who is then finally uh, crediting a corporate on the other side. Um, so this uh, part of the industry um, I called corporate to bank. And uh, this is uh, the, the discussion around the message usage here, which is predominantly ISO 2020. Um, is uh, done uh, in the CGI group, the Common Global Implementation Market Practice Group. And um, yeah, as, as I mentioned here, we look at the payment initiation primarily and the communication between a bank and its, its clients, between you and your clients. And again, here I, I want to, to draw some attention on, on recent developments um, that in um, so now that we have defined those three layers, um, I'm basically reusing this to structure the rest of the presentation. And I will start with, with the tip of the iceberg uh, with the bank uh, to MI update. So on the next slide, basically, um, here we can observe uh, on the right hand side that more and more market infrastructure um, are announcing migration plans and they are doing that globally, right? Um, so the, the, the PMPG, um, the Payments Market Practice Group, has actually collected all those initiatives in, in an Excel spreadsheet uh, that, that is uh, linked in, in this presentation. And just to give you an impression, I, I think there are over 40 different activities going on um, in various markets. And you can see on the diagram that it's not a regional exercise, it's really global, regardless if it's mayor, um, if it is APEC, if it is the Americas, everywhere across the globe, 
uh, the market infrastructures are considering to migrate uh, to ISO 2002 uh, with different migration approaches uh, that are also visualized here and that I will, will drill into a little bit uh, later. Uh, but uh, there, there's a strong move into that direction and that is going to be even increased. So the amount, I would, I would uh, bet on it, that the amount of market in infrastructure moving to ISO 2002 will increase within the next uh, couple of years. Um, what you also can see on that, on that slide is that some of the market infrastructure have actually already migrated to ISO 2002, and they are using it in production. And here I would like to highlight uh, the Swiss, who basically are using uh, ISO 2022 payment message uh, since some time. Uh, but they are using it in a, in a maintenance release version of 2009. And uh, due to the uh, to the harmonization efforts across uh, across the globe, and due to the more recent uh, migration plans um, of other market infrastructures, they are now considering to upgrade uh, or to take the opportunity to upgrade to a new um, a maintenance version, maintenance version 2019 um, in 2022. So um, yeah, and with this a new version they will be actually able to use further enhanced um, elements within the ISO 2022 payment message, like, for example, the UTR or the LDI. Um, the maintenance version 2019, uh, just as a side note, is also the version which we have selected uh, with the T2 Go Live in, in November 2022. And uh, this is also the base version that uh, most of the other market infrastructure are selecting in their implementation of ISO 2022. So uh, on the next slide, I will now go a little bit more into the migration approaches uh, or modes uh, that, that you can see in the diagram and explain a little bit about that. So broadly speaking, there are two different uh, migration approaches that you, that you can observe. Um, so we have the um, like for like um, and we have the fully fledged uh, approach. So what does like for like mean? Like for like basically just maps the existing fin message and its fields um, like for like or in a one-to-one -one, uh, fashion where possible to the new ISO 2022 message elements. Um, so it sounds easy, but to be honest, uh, we have we have tried this exercise and uh, the devil is in the detail. So it may not be as easy as it as it sounds in the, in the first bit. Then on the second uh, or, or basically uh, the, the second uh, approach is the fully fledged approach um, which allows the the users or the market participants uh, to make use of uh, the enhanced ISO 2022 elements compared to the current uh, fin uh, MT messages so here we have structured address information or structured remittance information just as an example um, just to recap or to, to remind everyone, the like-for-like like approach uh, was rejected by the European market back in 2015. Yeah, we as Eurosystem intended to implement ISO 2022 uh, in a like-for-like like fashion already then, but uh, we, we received the feedback, a very strong feedback uh, from the market that uh, fully fledged ISO 2022 is the only way how we can as banks uh, achieve the expected benef benefits within a migration of a standard. So uh, as mentioned, T2 will support ISO 2022 fully fledged from the start. Um, last but not least, uh, I think on the previous slide it was mentioned that there is a coexistence uh, sometimes uh, possible uh, by, uh, with some MIs. And what that means is that uh, during this phase, uh, the MI allows actually to send FIN and T messages and ISO 2022 messages in parallel. Um, however, the, the caveat here is again that if you send an ISO 2022 message during the coexistence phase, this will be limited to a like-for-like -like content, so to the to the content that a regular payment and T message uh, can, can contain. So. On the next slide, I will, I will briefly introduce a an, uh, recent initiative of the group of 20 um, that is actually fueling uh, the ISO 2022 migration in the bank uh, to MI space. So um, 
uh, as a brief introduction, right? This is a this is a huge endeavor. Uh, but uh, just to summarize very very briefly and crisply, the group of twenty uh, made enhancing cross-border payments a priority some years ago, and uh, the aim of of that um, of that endeavor is uh, to basically make cross-border payments faster, cheaper, more transparent, and more inclusive. And uh, that that uh, endeavor shall basically be implemented, I think, in a time time frame of 2025 to 2027. So uh, G20 expects widespread benefits from that from that initiative, and this is not just um, um, uh, contained to to wholesale payments or to high value payments, but it's uh, looking a little bit broader. It also looks at retail, right? Um, um, so the, the FSB and the CPMI have been tasked to develop a roadmap and that they have done uh, in October 2020. And within this roadmap to achieve uh, those targets, become faster, cheaper, and so on, um, they have defined five focus areas. And one of uh, these uh, focus areas is actually one that I would like to highlight um, on the next slide. Um, so, um, you see on the left hand side all five areas, um, but primarily important for this audience right now is focus area D. Uh, and it deals with data and market practice. And uh, the most important building block of that, of that focus area um, is uh, building block 14. And that actually talks about harmonization of cross border payments by the usage of ISO 20022. And uh, why, why am I mentioning this? Um, I think from, from our target perspective, um, uh, roughly 30% of all our volumes are actually cross-border payments or have, have a cross-border leg um, um, out. And uh, uh, we are well positioned uh, compared to this, uh, to this uh, G20 initiative as we are going to migrate already in 2022 to ISO 22. Uh, 22. Um, so uh, just just to highlight uh, once again, the G20 means it really seriously. With this. So you see, focus area B, for example, is dealing with the regulatory support of that initiative um, as part of the roadmap. So also regulators, supervisors, as well as overseers will be approached with these initiatives and will be, uh, will be asked uh, for support in order to make it happen. And uh, basically, therefore, I also see uh, the, the, the possibility that 